about six weeks ago, I interviewed an expert in making money online every single month. Well, you can imagine we got a lot of questions on that video, including if she was a real person because we used an avatar, how taxes work, is there ageism, how does PayPal charge you, and a whole bunch of other things. Today she's back, and we're going to give you all your answers in today's video. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. We are lucky today because my friend TJ is back. We had hundreds and hundreds of comments, a lot of them asking, first of all, why she was using an avatar, like you can see here. That's her. She's real. She's live. And we're going to explain that today along with answering all of your other questions. If you didn't see the last video, the reason we did it is that I'm the author of the book, Work From Home While You Roam, The Ultimate Guide to Jobs That Can Be Done From Anywhere. And TJ actually wrote me an email to say thank you because she had made so much money out of the book and we became friends. But if you look at the book, like she was saying, there are over 300 jobs. What we highlighted in the video we're talking about are three companies that do market research and user testing. So like if a company's coming out with a new app, they'll have people test it first. Or market research companies will look at people with different demographics, and that's what she's doing. And I'll link that video down below so you can see those three companies and watch that and get her advice for how to succeed with those companies. I don't want to speak for you, but you've made two to $3,000 a month for how long doing this? For since um, at least 2020, I started in 2020. I honestly thought in order to make money online that I had to go sit my butt down between, you know, 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. or a night shift and doing customer service, that sort of thing. I had no idea this world existed. And I bought your book when I saw it. And that led me to this. That led me to making all of this money. And I did some other research as well. And um, you started it all for me. And I really appreciate that. So that's really why I'm doing this interview is my way of saying thanks back to you for doing it. Thank you. And um, yeah. by the way, we're going to get into the questions now, but I got a lot of comments from people that have already gotten the book and they were not able to update the book. So that doesn't apply to everybody, but I'm going to tackle that at the end and also show you some of the scammers that have tried to knock off the book. So if you do go over and look at it, you don't get one of the awful ones um, <laughs> that are not me, but um, I have a way for you to update the book automatically. So if that's you, please watch until the end. So TJ, you want to get into some of the questions? Let's go. I'm going to go ahead and start with the avatar questions. Um, a lot of them we erased because they were just rude. She um, doesn't have any responsibility to show people her face. She's just here to help. So the first question says, given the mistrust about the avatar, it might have been better to have presented this as a phone interview. I admit that I had mixed feelings at the start of the video, but the information TJ shared sounds credible. This is work requiring time and effort and definitely not a get rich quick scheme or easy money. It's basically, it basically boils down to putting the effort consistently and doggedly. Good luck to all those that seek and may find. Okay. Um, other people said they didn't find the avatar distracting at all. And, Somebody said, obviously, she approaches the job professionally in an organized, consistent manner. I enjoyed the presentation. If you're in the workplace, avatars are common in Zoom and Teams meeting. This is not 1990. <laughs> and then somebody said, she is smart, staying anonymous. Taught me something right away. Look, she's a real person. That is not an avatar. Um, not an I avatar. Know, I'm Just kind of my... feeling uh, like I want to get some breakfast. How about you? You want to get some breakfast? Yum, yum, yum. Right? Right? Before I'm I... feeling like a bun bun. Oh my god. I'm feeling like I want to be bun in a bun. Halloween special. I want to be in a Halloween special too. Hello. Dinosaur. Rawr. Rawr. Are you a dog person or a cat person? Because I'm feeling I'm like a dog person. You guys, this woof, is what woof. avatars do. Avatars are all over these kinds of calls. You can Google this for yourself. TJ is a real person. We're going to go over to another screen where we can show you screenshots and answer your questions. Ready, girl? Ready. Let's do it. So uh, I first, I want to start off. Why did I use an avatar? It allows me to protect my privacy 
uh, so I can share this valuable information to you, but also keep my privacy online. I'm a private person. I don't uh, I don't do Twitter. I don't do Instagram. But also professionally, for to do this kind of work, I really don't want my face out there. I want it to be uh, more anonymous. It's about comfort and uh, being anonymous. Gotcha. And you guys, look, she's not getting anything for doing this video with us. She's literally doing it out of the kindness of her heart to help people. And I've been on YouTube now for five years, and I like to keep it pretty drama-free. But I've learned over time that there are going to be negative people. Let's call them haters. Let's call them trolls in the comments. And I look at them most of the time like a pothole when you're going down the road. Uh, they're just a nuisance. But for everybody else that's actually trying to get real information from a real person that wants to help you make money online, this is the video to watch. Don't listen to the haters. There are two types of people in this world. The people that do stuff and the people that complain about the other people that do stuff. And everybody needs to decide which one they want to be. Um, if you're here for all the right reasons, keep watching and we'll answer all of your questions. Okay, we're gonna tackle the big one first. There were a lot of people that said there were ageism in these jobs. And look, I did a video like two years ago where I showed, I think five other completely separate different jobs that were similar to these, but for people that were over 55, 65. And I got similar comments in that video. I'll link that below also. But there were a lot of people in those comments that were making money. And I'm going to do a follow-up video on this in a few months because I dug in and did some research after these comments. And yes, depending on the age you look at, 55, 65, whatever, that age group is 50 to 60, 65% of the buying market. It is not these babies. And all of the research is telling companies that they need to do more market research and user testing, which is exactly what we're talking about, for that generation. But it's 30% of the market right now. They could do better, but 30% of the user testing and market research out there is for people in that age group. So just know that right now, and I will now read TJ the questions. Okay. The first one says, several people have mentioned that companies don't want people over 65. I have also found this to be true. Any advice? Then the next one says, this sounds more like an informational and a hook to buy the book. A more honest way would be to tell people what is really going on, such as if your age is anyway above 55 or 60, you will spend hours answering and never be, being selected and that your chances of really making real money are somewhere between zero to none. I am. I can feel TJ wanting to tackle that one. Next question. Yes. Ne next question. I have a hard time believing this because I've checked out the jobs you push. Uh, honestly, that, that I find that word irritating. And I'd say they are not viable for most people. The worst thing in those surveys, which you spend hours on, only to find you don't qualify for some reason. I appreciate this video, but your job ideas are not for most people. Maybe younger people... And I don't believe she only does this for a few hours. And the last one, which had hundreds of comments attached to it, the surveys I found are overwhelmingly for under 65 year olds. Um, I used to waste time answering their interview questions and never got chosen, so it wasn't worth it. And people said, me too. So can you tell the audience since they can't see you how old you are? I'm 55, I turned 55 in March. There were people that said they don't hire people over 45, over 50, over 60, over 65, over 79. They didn't hire you if you didn't have kids. They didn't hire you if you were white. They didn't hire you if you were black. I'm telling you, these gigs hire everybody because the gigs that we talked about in the first video were user testing and market research. And I'm going to have TJ explain to you again what those things are but they're looking for all kinds of people, including people over 50 and 55. And TJ, since you did this before you turned 55 and after, did you see a difference? So far, I have not seen a difference whatsoever. I have just as many um, user tests. I have just as many um, marketing research gigs, as many one-on-one -on -one interviews. 
so far nothing has changed for me. Sometimes they do care about your age. That's it's it, that's just that's just a given. They they do care sometimes. But I understand everyone's frustration. Listen, I'm 55. I I only turned 55 in March, but I have the same amount of one-on-one -on -one interviews and marketing research and I've qualified for the same amount as I did before I turned 55. So again, I can't I can't speak to 65 and over. I can only speak to my age. However, what I want to say is not everyone is going to fit every target demographic for every survey or every market research. However, there are hundreds of other side hustle opportunities and micro tasks that are not age dependent. Persistence and exploring various options can help you find what suits you best, right? So if you find that the, the, the marketing research is only one small slice of what's available out there, for the online side hustle gig. That's all I'm saying. And I would like to say that nobody is pushing any specific jobs. Robin is giving you a list of companies to go try out for and see what works for you. That's all she's doing. It's up to you to go out there and explore and figure out what works for you. If if these things don't work for you, okay, that that that's all right. But they're, for a lot of other people, they really do. And uh, I just want to say once again that persistence is key in this. I don't qualify. So here's the thing. On user testing, when I do user testing, the screeners are very quick. And those are most of the time I'm not even asked my age. I'm asked what I do or what company do I use. Do I use Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, or whatever. And that's all they care about. They care about what bank you use if you're going to user test their website. Uh, they care about uh, what kind of shoes you wear, but they're most of the time they're not even asking for the age on those. Some they are, but most are not. I would also like to add that I'm going to retire in 193 days. <laughs> <It's>, counting. <laughs> nobody's counting. And when I retire, I'm just going to say that I am not going to suddenly start ticking the box that says I retired. I'm going to continue to say that my occupation is what it has been for the last 30 years. You just have to keep applying. Consistency is a key. I understand people's frustration. But what I saw in the comments a lot was people said, well, I tried a few times and I didn't qualify, so I gave up. If you are trying one thing and it doesn't seem to be working for you, we only gave you three companies to try. There are tons of different companies out there and tons of different types of jobs. I do all kinds of things that don't involve those three jobs I gave you. Yeah. So consistency is key. Finding what works for you is key. I don't qualify for every screener that I apply for. It could be my age. It could be because I have a 10 year old child, but they're only looking for people who have, you know, eight and under children. So not everybody's going to qualify for everything. I said this in my last video, and I think it's really important with this kind of work. You don't sit down and immediately start working and making money. You have to fish for it. Like when you go fly fishing, you stick your rod out there a whole bunch of times and you put the line out there and you keep fishing. And every once in a while, you hook something. That's just like this. And the more consistent you are, the more companies you sign up with, the more the money is going to come in. Well, so most of the times the screeners are multiple choice or, you know, you're just ticking a few boxes. And then a lot, they're just asking you like what product you use or what 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 uh, state you live in or you know those kind of demographic informations and what product you use if they're like popcorn you know I did one for microwave popcorn and they wanted which which popcorn you use where did you buy it from for example um, and you um, so you just tick those quick boxes and they may ask you to write two sentences. Tell us the last time you enjoyed popcorn. They just want to make sure that you can put a cohesive sentence together, basically. Right. So most of the time, they, they don't involve a lot of writing. So you just tell them what you use and where you're from. And sometimes you get picked and sometimes you don't. And but you do have to fill out a lot of screeners in order to get picked. I would say, okay, for user testing, I would say um, I, I would say I, I would fill out and user testing on usertesting.com, for example, I may fill out um, 10 or 15 or even 20 screeners, but each one only takes less than 30 seconds. And then, but once I do get one, 
it takes 15 minutes and I make $10. Or I do one and it's a one-on-one -on -one interview for an hour and I make $60. So, so it, it pays off after a while. Yeah. And you um, were saying before, you don't make money necessarily, the kind of money that you're making right away, you have to build up to it. Is that, is that right? You can start making money the minute you sit down at the computer, but you have to, um, you do have to gain a little bit of a reputation for on usertesting.com, for example, you're rated. And so you want to keep up your five star rating um, in order to uh, you know, qualify for, for better and more jobs if you have a better reputation. However, you can start right away and start, you know, especially like, for example, on IntelliZoom, on marketing research, there is, you don't need to have a um, particular reputation, for example. On DScout, you need to be bright. You need to answer the questions articulately. You need to look into the camera. Don't look up your nose. Have a nice background. And there you yeah. go. And and look, go watch the old video to get all the information on all these companies, um, because we're not talking about that in this video. We're just answering the questions, and I'll get to more in a second. But we had lots of people write us that had jumped in and had already made money after watching the video. And I'm getting information that my signal is low, so probably my lips don't match my face right now, but we're going to keep it moving. The next most common question was about taxes. What about paying the taxes? You may be making good money, but the taxes will be more than what you make. Hmm. And now if you get paid $600, you also have to pay taxes on that amount as well. Okay, question. After watching this and several other videos, I know that it's advised to have a separate email account for this type of income, but what about a separate phone number, PayPal account, bank account, and what about taxes? Is this considered 1099 work? that you have to pay those high self-employment taxes on. Next question. The issue I have is with this type of work is that it's considered independent contractor. Therefore, the employer does not pay social security taxes on your behalf based on your wages. When I was a notary, I found lots of work, but at a tax time, I was paying 50% rate in my state. That's a bitter pill to swallow. Okay, um, before you jump in, TJ, can I say just a quick couple things? Absolutely. Okay. If you go into the book, I have an entire section called Financial Considerations for the Self-Employed that tells people how to get health insurance and directs them to resources about taxes. Now, we are not giving tax information here. We are not tax experts. You need to talk to your accountant. But I can tell you as a self-employed person, um, it's true. I have to pay both sides of what they call FUDA and SUDA but you're not in a 50% tax rate unless you're making that much money. If this is a little side hustle, and it just depends on how much money you're bringing in overall. So you need to talk to your accountant or look at some of the resources in the book. And I've had other people say that it's going to hurt your retirement if you work remotely because you're not paying into social security. That is false. That's why you pay both sides. And I have a whole section on how to save for retirement without having a regular employer. Um, these jobs are 1099 work, which means you get a separate tax form. Um, and again, I'm not a tax advisor, but what that lady said is true. Um, you only get one if you've made over $600. Okay, TJ, take it. What do you think? Yes, uh, I just say taxes are a part of life. I can't offer tax advice. Uh, but just like any income, you just have to report it to the IRS. I personally report all my income, even if I'm not 1099. And um, I think that uh, the, here's the thing. So so I have to pay taxes on the money. You're supposed to pay taxes on all of your income. That's just a part of life, no matter where it comes from, number True. one. Mm -hmm. And then and then um, it's just a matter of uh, keeping records. And there are ways to offset that. I can't. I'm not, I, again, I can't do a, be a tax advisor, but yes, that's just part of life. And, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I also would also like to say that, you know, okay, even if, even if hypothetically I was taxed at a 50% rate, which I'm not then, but also I don't have to start my car. I don't have to go anywhere. My butt does not have to be in a chair at any particular time. I can stop whenever I want to every day. I don't have to work on a particular day. My time is my own for this. 
So those are the plus sides. Um, then um, I also want to say that uh, as far as PayPal, as far as um, an email address, so I, I use a separate email address for all of this work. Otherwise, my regular email address would be inundated because you get lots and lots of when you sign up all these marketing research companies or whatever, you get lots of emails. Hey, we have a new one about um, uh, women's shoes. You know, do this survey for that or, you know, de-scout. All kinds of stuff comes through. So but I do not have a, I just added that email address to my already current PayPal account. I did not make a separate PayPal account. I did not make a separate bank account. There okay, was another great. question. There was another question about PayPal fees. Okay. Mm -hmm. So PayPal does not charge you fees to, to bring in the money. PayPal does not charge you fees to take out the money. If you, when, when I want to transfer my money to my bank, then I do one to three business days and it goes into my bank account for free. If I want the money right now, like within minutes, they charge you a 1% or 2% fee. I'm not sure what that is, but I never do that. Right. So I don't incur any PayPal fees whatsoever. Do you have to look office ready or can you be in your PJs and curlers? So everything is not on camera. The only time you are on camera is if you have set up a one-on-one -on -one interview or a focus group where you're with other people. And that takes place like in a Zoom setting, basically. Um, most of, for user testing, you are mostly recording only your screen. You are not recording your face. But every once in a while with user testing, they do want to record your face, but they tell you that ahead of time that this screener is for a face recording and you have to click a box that says, I agree to have my face recorded. So you can just choose not to do those. So in fact, <laughs> I have done user testing, butt naked right out of the shower. <laughs> okay. See? Yeah. Then PJs, that's a step up, I guess. Okay. Many of these sites want so much of your personal information. I guess I'm skeptical. What are the chances of you, uh, of your info getting out there in the wrong hands? Uh, the chances are the same as anywhere. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's data breaches everywhere. So I'm not giving them my, I'm, I'm never giving them my social security number. I'm not giving them my driver's license information. Um, when I'm giving out, when they want my address for something, it's a reputable company. That's a lo long-standing uh, company. When I'm doing user testing, it's I'm basically anonymous. The website, usertesting.com, for example, they know my real name. They know my occupation. Um, they know my email address. They might know my snail mail address. Um, but they don't know my social security number. I'm not giving out those kind of private details. Okay, this is, is an important um, differentiation. So let me just recap if I can. When you go in and apply to do work with these companies, and we talked about D-Scout and Telezoom and user testing, that's the ones we talked about in the last video, or any of these companies, you do give them your address and your date of birth and your social security number because, like we were just talking about, they may need to send you a 1099, just like any other employer or company that you work for. Um, like I do that. All of my 1099s yeah. uh, that I did last year came from people that have that information. But when TJ is going into the screeners and doing the user testing and the market research, she's not giving that information. And let me explain that. Um, these companies in Telezoom and user testing and, and D-Scout, they are doing the testing for other companies. So like she talked about New Balance shoes. New Balance might be hiring D-Scout to find people to do the user testing, but New Balance doesn't have your information, right? Correct. Just the platform. And Correct. Again, in the book, we, we vet things, and there's an entire chapter on how not to get scammed with resources, but we all have to be careful. I mean, it's a legitimate question, but if people are asking for that information outside of those platforms or – they want you to pay for a job, that is a scam. Don't do that. Never, okay. never, never, never pay. Yeah, you're supposed to get paid. That's, that's, that's right. the point, right? Okay, ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. Um, I've done some surveys, but find many of them ask about my job. 
well, I don't work anymore, but I used to and, and can provide insight. How do I respond? Um, and we kind of touched on this before, but go ahead. Yes. So um, I recommend that you you are the profession that you have always been, even if you aren't currently doing it. And when I retire in just 193 days or so, I will continue to say that I am the profession that I have done for the last 30 years. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Next question. Um, is it necessary to put in your age on Dscout? I believe they ask it in the profile. Um, and some screeners ask for your age and some don't. But I believe in the profile, in your profile, you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And again, I mean, you guys. They're going to see on D Scout, they're going to see how old you are, really. Right. Because it's everything, it's on camera. Yeah. You, and you're, so you like, you're testing apps, you're testing websites to see if they're user friendly. That's what it is. So they're going to see you, you guys. Um, but again, not all the jobs have anything to do with your age. Correct. Just some they, of just want, they just they want but, people who drink Coca-Cola, not necessarily a specific age. Sometimes they do want a specific age, but sometimes that doesn't matter. Yeah. So. And that has to do with the company that they're doing the work for and what demographic they're trying to market to. That's all that correct. is. It's not discrimination. Okay. Next question. <laughs> God, I'm glad someone has figured out how to work the system. But when you get told several times that you don't meet their demographics, you tend to give up. I wish people would quit touting this as a legit job for everyone. It's BS. And I said, well, that is very negative. <laughs> TJ didn't give up. She uses this as a legit way to make money every month. That's not BS for her, her family, or her retirement. I usually don't like clap back that like that, but that guy, what do you think? So the, the difference between me and that person is that I'm persistent. I didn't go, if I had started in my first hour and I got 10 little rejections on user testing, I never would have made any money. So you just have to be persistent. You can't go, well, they rejected me twice, I quit. I mean, that's like a toddler. You, you, you have to, there is some sunk cost in there where you have to spend the time to make the money. You have yeah. to spend some time filling out screeners in this particular kind of work. You have to spend the time. How it, there are also, but let me tell you, there are hundreds of companies out there where you don't have to spend the time doing screeners, where you get hired on to do transcriptions, for example, or to do other little tasks at, um, at uh, there's a, a lots of little micro task companies out there. So that yeah. once you're in, once you pass their little test, you're going to get lots of little jobs that you don't have to fill out screeners for. Yeah. So. It's just if that's a, not it's your just thing, then don't it's do just it. A self-defeating way to look at it. Uh, Robin, can these jobs be done on a tablet or does it need to be on a laptop? So I do 95% of the work on my uh, laptop. Sometimes they actually want you to use your phone. D Scout is 99% phone, in fact. Um, and I don't, I, I'm not really a tablet person. I'm sure that there are some jobs that you can do on a tablet, but I'm not 100% sure. The best way would be to sign up and find out. For every job listing in there, it's going to tell you the requirements, what they're looking for, how they pay, when they pay, and a link to apply. I know I'm not trying to get everyone to go over to the book, but look, just because I wrote the book, I can tell you a lot of companies do allow you to use a tablet. You just have to find the ones that work for you. Okay, ready? Next one. Yes. Um, can you ask TJ um, if you do it as a side hustle and you have another job, what happens if an interview comes in when you're at your other job? So when you sign up to do an interview, you you um, you pick an, a schedule that works for you. They'll give you, they'll tell you what openings are left. And if something works for me, fine. If not, then I don't do that particular interview. To recap, age matters sometimes, but not all the time. As a self-employed person, yes, you have to pay your taxes, but contact your accountant because it depends on your tax bracket. Don't be scared. I've been doing it for years. Um, all kinds of companies work for all kinds of different people and different kinds of devices. And this is legit. This is not some BS thing. I don't do BS. Hey, everybody. 
I am in an RV in a storm, and so my Wi-Fi connection is not the best. And so TJ actually got knocked out of our meeting. So I want to say thank you very much to her for taking her time twice now to help people understand how to make money online. But now I'm going to talk to people that have my book or are looking for the book because there are some scammers out there. Now, I have two nonfiction books that are both updated all the time. One is Be a Nomad, Change Your Life, and the other one is Work From Home While You Roam. Now, look at this screenshot. If you go into Amazon, and you look at the books, you're going to see if there is an update available down below the book. Now, my work from home copy was already updated. So you can see it here below, be a nomad, change your life. All you do is click the button and it updates it. I spoke with Kindle this morning and they are sending an email to everybody that purchased the book telling them that an updated version is being pushed into their device. Now, if you don't have automatic updates, you're going to have to do it yourself. And if it doesn't work, look down in the comments below, pinned at the top or in the description, I'm going to give you a link for you to go in and update the book. I am not trying to get people to repurchase the book. One of the benefits of the book is that it is updated once or twice a year all the links are redone and the jobs are vetted and you have access to the new information. So that should work for everybody. Otherwise, it's like you have an e-reader, you're looking online, you're looking on your phone, you don't know what's updated and what's not and some people have been having problems. For other people that wanna know, no, you do not need an e-reader to read the book, you just need the Kindle app or you can read it through your Amazon account. And I get a lot of questions asking if it's in paperback and I'm working on it because I hear you, you want it. But um, to me, you don't get the updated links. <laughs> then you would have to purchase it again every year. But I am doing that for you guys. So look at um, in the 2025 edition that will come out in paperback. Now, people, let me talk to you about the freaking scammers. I had a comment that said, I saw your book, but the author's name was different. It is like whack-a-mole, you guys. When you go over to Amazon, what you want to look for is my book that has a green banner on the top that says 2024 edition that has 1,700 plus reviews and is 4.6 stars. If you scroll down now, you're going to see a whole bunch of other people that stole the title um, or they tried to get AI make an audiobook for them. And you can see they have one, two, three reviews and they're like one star, two stars, because maybe their mom gave them a review. There is nothing I can do about that. Um, I could pursue a copyright violation with Amazon, but it takes a long time. And all I can do is hope that people that read my book and like the book go in and give those other people one star and then hopefully they go away. Like this lady who literally took a screenshot of my artwork on my cover um, that is original and tried to recreate my book, except for that she spelled entrepreneur wrong at the top and she has some pretty bad reviews. The link to my book is down below. Again, I want to thank TJ for coming and talking to us again. I know it's tough if you've never been self-employed before to tackle something like this, but you can do it. There is lots of money to be made out there remotely for you and anybody else that might need this information. I get emails from all kinds of people saying this helped me pay off my medical bills. This helped my kids work through college. All kinds of people are using this information to make money. They're not scams. It's real. It's legit. Um, if you have any additional questions, please put them down below. We will try and answer them. And I'll be coming out with another video before the end of the year addressing the age concerns specifically. I'll see you guys next week with an all new video. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels and be free.